So now that we have these helper functions and this close enough function, I was thinking we should uh, replace this threshold value and instead use our close enough function. But I was looking at these tests and realized, you know, we're actually testing that elapsed seconds is greater than some value and less than some value. So the logic actually is here is, is different, and I'm not testing for perfect equality. So I actually I actually can't change this like I thought I could, but I did want to point out that I at least was thinking about it. Now I've committed my code and I know we're getting greens in our tests. I can feel good about that. And so that now gives me freedom to either A, change what code I'm testing, or B, change my tests. And you think, oh, Jamie, we've done enough of this. But I actually was thinking we should we should go a little more uh, pro here. If you remember, I simply Googled the values to find this number here. But, you know, CMath, and now that we have the CMath library in, uh, we we can uh, use CMath to do this. So I could literally just say square root of 2 divided by 2. I'm going to put 2.0 F here just to show that, yes, I want integral, or I want floating point division, not integral division. Please do not truncate. So that's square root of 2 over 2. And then we had another one of those. Wasn't it square root? Let's see if I find it. Just do a search, square root. 2 over 2, and then I swore we did another square root 3 over 3. That's weird that I didn't. Oh, I had the match case turned on. Uh, let's do square root 3 over 2. So square root 3 over 2. And Yeah, there's a little bit of runtime to this now that I'm not embedding a constant directly in, but I, I really don't care. It's test code. Let's make sure this still builds and runs. Our tests are good. I can feel green. I immediately get that feedback. Yes, that was smart, or no, that was dumb. All right, uh, but but now I know, and I know immediately. That's that's a benefit of unit testing, even though it takes forever to set these up. So I'm actually going to go commit this to my repository, and then we can move on. Okay, some other fix-ups. I know. I, again, I can. I'm free to change my code. I know my tests are good. I can optimize if I want to, and I do want to. So let's go over here. Cosine and sine. Um, kind of expensive functions, relatively speaking, compared to many of the basic mathematical operators. And, and even though our CPUs run extremely fast, the less work I can have them do uh, more often is better. And, and generally, it's not good to optimize your code prematurely. It's called premature optimization, where, oh, I know the, a lot about this one little thing, and I'm going to spend days on end optimizing this one little part of code, and, oh, I got that lean and mean, and it's going so fast, and, oh, that code only gets called once for the entire game? Oh, I just wasted a week and a half of my life to optimize some code that's called once for the entire game? So generally, that's why you don't want to do premature optimization. You want to write elegant, good code, and generally elegant, good code is fast code as well. We get we get both bang for the buck, but not always. Um, and then if, if our frame rate slows down or our game's running slowly, let's use a profiler. And if you don't know what that is, it basically shows you what parts of your code are taking the longest. We're going to write one. We're going to use one in our game. Don't worry about that. But we can use a profiler to say, hey, did you know you're calling this function like 10,000 times every frame? Do you want to try making it leaner or meaner? Or do you want to try calling it less, so to say? So a profiler really lets us see, oh, that's what's really going on, instead of us just assuming. You know what happens when you assume things? I, chances are you've seen this. Assume. But i got to point it out. You make a this out of you and me when you assume. So anyway, um, let's not assume anything. But I do know that rotate's going to get called a lot. I know I'm going, to, I'm going to use it quite often. In fact, it's going to be used so often I inlined it here. So maybe this is premature, maybe it's not. But I'm going to say float uh, cosine result gets cosine angle in radians. Float sine result gets sine angle in radians. So notice I'm calling cosine, I'm storing it away, and sine, I'm storing it away. And now I only have to call cosine once here instead of calling it twice, once right here and once right here. So let's do this. Let's do cos result, cos result. This may help on readability too, who knows. Uh, sine result, you can be the judge. And sine result. All right, so I just optimized my code. 
How do I know whether I didn't screw up or not? Ah, uh, I got the unit test backing me up. Let's build this, run this. Yay, all green, feeling good, good time to commit. Hold on. Okay, so there's a few other cleanup things I want to point out, but I think it'd be appropriate to do those in another video. So I'm going to stop this video here. Let's move on. I'm going to show you some uh, major cleanups that we can do, save us some headache and some compile times for sure.